Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm really excited to do because it's going to be a one brand top five, bottom five. And I'm gonna be focusing on Anastasia Beverly Hills. I'm gonna have a bit of a longer intro here, so bear with me, but I wanted to explain kind of why I was doing this video because it's in place of a series that I typically do every month. So every month on my, on my channel, I like to do best brand buys and I'm focusing on two brands in there, a more affordable brand and also a high-end brand. I give $200 worth of recommendations for the high-end brand and $100 worth of recommendations for the affordable brand. Last month I did uh, this video focused all on Ulta. I did best buys at Ulta Beauty and that kind of took place of the best brand buys series. I did that because I was doing so many Sephora focused videos because of all the sales and such happening at Sephora. I wanted to do one for Ulta. When I was thinking about what to do for this month, I went back two months ago on the last kind of more traditional best brand buys, best brand buys and was looking at the comments and there was so many people that requested it for an Anastasia video. So many thumbs up on those comments um, talking about Anastasia that I was like, I wonder what I could do here. And so I decided that was going to be my high-end brand. So before I even picked my affordable brand, I was making my list for Anastasia and I realized that I've tried a lot from the brand and it's really kind of a split brand for me. There's products that I really, really enjoy. There's products that did not work out for me at all, products that I've returned, etc. And I thought maybe I could do a top five, bottom five. I know that's a really well-liked series on YouTube and I just thought because I've tried so much from the brand, I thought that I could do this style of format. So that's what I'm going to be doing in place of my best brand buys for the month of December. So I hope that you still like the top five, the bottom five, you'll have to let me know. Um, maybe if you want to see me doing this kind of, you know, maybe every other month with the best brand buys, because sometimes I just, I just can't do it on one brand because I haven't tried enough. But Anastasia is definitely a brand that I could. And because I saw it being requested so often in my October video, it must have been, uh, I thought that I could do the top five, bottom five. So I'm really excited to do this. I really do like this style of series, this style of video as well. So if you want to see my thoughts on some products that I've tried from Anastasia and how I would categorize them, why don't we go ahead and get into it. So for my bottom five, I'm going to start with bottom five. I typically like to do that and end on a more positive note. I don't own anything except for one in my collection right now, so I will just be putting some photos here on the screen. But I have to say with Anastasia, one product that it was always just like out of my reach. When Anastasia came out with their liquid lipsticks, they were so hard to get. They were like consistently sold out online. I was going everywhere in store trying to find these liquid lipsticks because everybody was just raving about them. I think that Anastasia came out with the liquid lipsticks back before they were like super trendy. You know, they were kind of one of the first brands to really jump on the liquid lipstick trend. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And people were just going bananas. I mean, I would hear so many color recommendations for the Anastasia liquid lipsticks and I was like, I have to, I have to have to get this. I can remember going to a concert in Kansas City and I was like, please, I was with my husband and another couple, I was like, can we please, please, please go to the mall because I really wanna see if I can find these Anastasia lipsticks. We made a, a detour for me specifically to go in and try to see if they had the shades that I really wanted out of the Anastasia liquid lipsticks. It was crazy. So it was such a disappointment when I got them and I didn't like the formula at all. And I tried so many different shades because you know, I did that thing that I, I do sometimes with lipsticks that I'm like, I don't like this because I just, I don't like the shade. Shade's not for me, so I'll get a different shade and then I'll try it again. I have done this several times, which is just ridiculous. So I tried several different shades of the Anastasia liquid lipsticks. And like I said, I've decluttered all of them out of my collection during my lipstick declutters because I just don't like the formula. To me, it is too thick and it is too moussey on my lips. It is a very drying formula on my lips and I like liquid lipsticks. I can do more drying liquid lipsticks, but I cannot do the Anastasia ones. They dry too uncomfortably on my lips. They flake off. I get like the butthole lips going on and I just do not like this formula. And it's funny, as more brands have come out with the liquid lipsticks, I feel like I hear about Anastasia less and less. You know, it's what people always used to be wearing, putting in their favorites videos. And that's why, that's what contributed to the hype for me. That's why I wanted them so badly because so many people are talking about them. But I feel as more and more have come out, I hear less and less about Anastasia. You have to let me know though. I kind of feel, I'm a little bit nervous for this video because I feel like I have a lot of people's like holy grails from Anastasia that I actually don't love. So you'll have to let me know nicely where we are contradictory to one another, but the liquid lipsticks, I just, I couldn't get into them and I freaking wanted to so bad, let me tell you. 
Another lip product from Anastasia is her, just like the matte lipsticks, the bullet matte lipsticks. And let me tell you, I once again got hyped for these. I was ready to go when she came out with them. I was like, yes, I'm gonna get me some. This is gonna be great. I did the exact same thing though. I purchased a color. I want to say this one was in Dead Roses was the first one that I bought. And it was, you know, it was like a pretty color, but I was like, oh, you know, I don't think I love it. Don't think I love the formula, but it's probably just the shade. I'll just buy another one just to be sure. I did the same freaking thing as I did with the liquid lipsticks. So I bought another shade of the Anastasia matte lipsticks. And this one was in more of a nude. And I'm like, okay, I just don't like the formula. It's just not for me. Again, I'm not always a huge fan, you know, so a lot of, obviously makeup is all personal preference, but especially when it comes to my lip preferences, sometimes matte bullet lipsticks just don't do it for me because they can be very hard to apply on the lips because, you know, you're getting that more mattifying effect in the lipstick too, but it makes it harder and kind of skippy to apply on the lips. That is what I was really finding with her liquid lipsticks. I felt like I was never applying it evenly. evenly. I was always having to come in with a lip liner to really outline my lips, and I don't really go for lip liners a lot, but it was so difficult to make my lips look even and like totally filled in. I was having to use the lip liner to try to perfect the lip look, and I was like, why do I keep trying this? They weren't like super uncomfortable on the lips or by any means. I liked the matte look to them, but I just couldn't get over the application, how tough it was that I could never just wear the lipstick on its own. I always had to bring in a lip liner. And again, it just wasn't the most comfortable because a lot of times when you wear a matte lipstick, you can't really rub your lips together a lot. But this one was like, you know, it's almost like your lips would stick together, you know, when you're trying to wear it. And I was just like, why do I keep doing this? This is just crazy. So. Unfortunately, the Anastasia lips, I just have not had a very good experience with, so I would have to put both of those in the bottom five category. Okay, so next up is another one that I just really wonder how many people are going to dislike me for saying this, but the Anastasia Glow Kits are not a personal favorite of mine. And again, so many people hype these up. I fall into the hype. I literally watch YouTube videos all day long. I have one pulled up right now on my laptop. It is on pause because I'm obviously not watching it right now as I'm filming, but I watch YouTube videos all day long. I love hearing people's recommendations. I love hearing what worked, what didn't work. And when so many people start talking about the glow kits, I was like, I love highlighters. I'm definitely going to go for this. And one thing too that I want to say is I feel like over time my highlighter preferences have also changed. I don't love buying palettes anymore because typically no matter what palette you're buying there's going to be at least one shade in there if not two if not three depending on what size the palette is of highlighters that simply do not work for your skin tone. You know a lot of times companies are coming out with with highlighter palettes that will have at least one highlight shade in there for you know across a bunch of different skin tones and it's like that's great but i would have rather have a palette all focused on my skin tone and then another palette for that skin tone and another palette because that just makes more sense so when i look at my highlight collection which i'm looking at right now it is mostly single highlighters and yes sometimes you can get a better value if you're purchasing in a palette but for me the value isn't there if i'm still not using all of the shades or the majority of the shades in a palette, I still would rather buy a single highlighter and be able to get use out of it. Especially with highlights, it's so impossible. I've never hit pan on a highlighter. I don't know if I ever will hit pan on a highlighter because you need such a small amount of product that it's just really hard to hit pan on those. So palettes typically are not my preference anymore. So that kind of factored into the glow kit. But again, I've tried, I think it's three now of the Anastasia glow kits. One was the Nicole Guerrero collab. One was one of the first glow kits that came out. And then I believe I tried another one that came down a little bit later in the line, the sugar glow kit, uh, I believe it was. And again, I've declared them all out of my collection. I don't have any more to, sh to show in this video because they just were not a personal preference of mine. And I feel like I have other highlighters and other highlight formulas that I love. I never did try the Amrezy highlight and I really, really considered that one because it was a single highlight. A lot of people said really good things about it. But the reason why I ended up not going for that is I have a lot of highlights. I don't need to bombard myself with even more highlights, but I was like, think about it. You've tried the Anastasia highlight formula. Maybe it's different from the glow kits to the single. Maybe it's different because it was a collaboration. I don't know, but I was like, you've tried that. You haven't loved it. Why are you going to buy another one? Don't do it. Be happy with your highlighters. 
that you already love. So that was a big reason why I didn't purchase the Ambrizi because I just didn't love the glow kits. I know. I know, I feel like a lot of people are going to be disagreeing with me, but let us know in the comments, do you love the glow kits? Which ones do you love? Again, I feel like a lot of people do, but sometimes you just got to be different, and I guess that's me. Okay, so next up is the product that I actually do have in my collection, and is the product that I'm wearing today. Can anyone guess what it is? It is the Brow Wiz. I do not enjoy the Anastasia Brow Wiz. And again, I purchased this a while ago because everybody raved about it. This is a great brow product. And if you guys have not been on my YouTube journey with me for a while, I used to not even do my brows. My first probably year on YouTube, I didn't touch my brows. There was nothing in them. They were left completely blank. I didn't know you were supposed to do your brows. YouTube taught me that. And so as I started to get into my brow game and trying different brow pencils, I really took to the internet. I really took to YouTube. What do you guys recommend? What can I do for my brows? And it was always the Anastasia, the Anastasia. What's my holy grail? The Anastasia. And I was like, okay, so I'm going to try the Anastasia Brow Wiz. This is in the $20 range. So it's expensive, especially for someone who was trying to learn how to do brows just in general. I had no idea what I was doing, how to fill in brows, how to give them a shape. I'm still not the best at it, but I feel like I've really come a long way from the girl who didn't do her brows at all in her YouTube videos. And I just really don't enjoy this one. So the shade that I have here is in taupe. I had a friend send this to me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it just a little bit more because maybe my preferences have changed. Maybe now that I'm more comfortable with my brows and I know that brow pencils are what I like to use, maybe I will feel differently about this one. So I've used this about three times now since I've, I got it, you know, fairly recently. And, uh, and I pulled it out today, too, because I knew I was going to film this one. And I was like, even though I wasn't feeling it the last couple times, I was like, let's just do it one more time. And I really don't enjoy it. I don't feel like my brows look bad. This is the shade Taupe. I don't feel like they look bad. But I feel like with this particular pencil, I feel like I really have to press very hard. And by the time I get done doing my brows, I have brows sprinkled on my face and even, like, in my lashes because I feel like I have to tug so hard. And there's, like, brows on the actual pencil because it's pulled out my brows because I'm having to try so hard to get product onto my brows and uh, so that I don't love. I have tried the NYX micro, micro brow pencil which is supposed to be a dupe for the Anastasia and I feel the exact same way about the NYX. It is too hard for me to work with, it is too hard to get product down and I rip my brows out so I just do not appreciate that. So the brow was I just do not enjoy. Um, you know I would say this is similar to like the Benefit Precisely My Brow that is something I much prefer. And there's even more affordable options too. The CoverGirl like ultra fine brow pencil, I would say is really similar to this and it's a bomb brow pencil. I just cannot get down with the brow whiz. I have not tried the Anastasia brow definer and I remember there was a point where I was like, I should try that one. And then I'm like, you don't, again, you don't love the brow whiz. Why not stick with the products that you really do enjoy? Because what if you end up purchasing that pricey brow pencil and then you don't love that one again? Like that's a bummer. So Again, the brow was a holy grail for a lot of people, but it would definitely go in my bottom five category. The last one that I have here, I actually had a couple that I could choose from for the bottom five category, but the one that I decided to include was the bronzer. So when Anastasia came out with bronzers, I was very excited because I love bronzers. I, I wear a bronzer every single day. It's one of my favorite parts of my makeup routine, and I just feel like it breathe some life into me or something. So I enjoy my bronzers. I like trying on new bronzers. It's really fun for me. So I decided to purchase one. I believe I picked it up from Ulta Beauty and I didn't love it. I didn't think the shade was super great for me. It was more red and not like a red tone that, you know, sometimes a red tone bronzer can make you look a little bit more natural because it almost makes you look a little bit on the sunburn side, which unfortunately, you know, can be a natural part of going out in the sun and getting sunburned but it did not look natural on me, so the shade wasn't great, but I also genuinely didn't like the formula either. I didn't find it to be the easiest bronzer to blend out on the skin, and like one of the worst things to me, oh, personally, that can happen is when you put bronzer on and then it's a really splotchy or you have striped bronzer and it doesn't look natural, and you're just like, oh no, do I leave the house? Or do I just stay inside? And I just felt like that was what was happening when I was using the Anastasia bronzers. You know, at first I was blaming my brushes, so I was using, you know, multiple brushes to try to get this bronzer to work for me and I was like I just am not loving this and I wanted to include the bronzer because again I just love bronzers so much and I feel like there's so many good formulas that just just are so much more natural looking and just so easy to apply and just effortless to apply those bronzers and I just did not feel that way with the Anastasia just 
I just felt like I tried way too hard to blend those um, to try to make them look natural. So I did not love the bronzer. So that would be the final item that I'm going to put in my bottom five category. Let me know what you guys think about my bottom five category. But let's go ahead and move over to my top five category because I love talking about things that I love personally. Okay, when I think about Anastasia Beverly Hills and what I enjoy the most from the brand, honestly, it's the eyeshadow palettes. They're, it's, it's funny because ColourPop to me is the same way, and I think when I did my ColourPop, when I featured it in a Best Brand Buys, I had so many palettes that I was mentioning, and sometimes that's just happened. You know, there's certain brands where I love their lip products and not so much anything else. Certain brands I love the eyeshadow palettes and not so much anything else. And with Anastasia, I love the eyeshadow palettes so much, and definitely the one that kind of started it all was the Modern Renaissance of course. I enjoy the Modern Renaissance so much and it's so funny because this was a palette that when it came out I was like I don't think I really need it. I think I'll be fine without it and then everybody started raving about this one and I was like oh no and then it kept selling out and I couldn't even get the palette. I tried so hard to get this palette. I could not, I could not, I could not and I remember it finally came back in stock on Sephora right before one of their VIB sales and I was like no way it's going to go out of stock before you know my 20% comes into play and it didn't so I got it and you know, I got it for a discount and I was like so proud of myself. I love the Modern Renaissance palette and one thing that I always like to say when I'm mentioning palettes that I love is that I have a very light hand when it comes to makeup. I am super light-handed with my palettes so a lot of times it's so funny because I'll hold up a palette and be like I love this and people are like why haven't you hit pan why isn't it dirty how are your Anastasia palettes so clean I don't know it's just that's just how I am I, I don't know how to explain it I don't know if I've ever hit pan on an eyeshadow palette either I probably I don't think I have and especially one thing with the Anastasia palettes is you need a light hand these are very pigmented very powdery shadows so you need like a light touch with her eyeshadow palettes and you still get a lot of payoff in there but definitely the modern renaissance is kind of what kicked it all off for me i love these tones in here i remember getting this palette when i was a bridesmaid like I don't know, several times over within a year. And this was the palette that I kept bringing with me and the palette that I kept wearing um, when I was a bridesmaid. And I know a lot of the other bridesmaids were grabbing for this palette as well. It's just it's so beautiful. Uh, I love these tones in here for sure. So the Modern Renaissance is kind of what really kicked it off for me. Um, before I jump into other eyeshadow palettes, I do have some I do have some other products as well. And one here was was a product that really surprised me. Uh, but when I was thinking about it and making my list of all the products I've tried and you know which ones I would categorize for this video, I kept coming back to her stick foundation. And it's because I I had kind of like a I don't know what I think about this product for a while. And I think I actually reviewed it and was like, I don't think I really love it. And then I want to say I put it in a makeup I changed my mind about video. And I was like, you know what? I didn't really like this at first, but all of a sudden I find myself keep reaching for it, keep reaching for it. This stick foundation just kind of really ran me through a loop for a while and I couldn't figure out what I thought about it, but I ended up really liking it and I've kept it around through my foundation declutters. It's interesting to me because I don't love stick foundations. I've tried, you know, several stick foundations from other brands and I really don't love them and I think I've probably decluttered all of my stick foundations out of my collection except for this one. It has made it through my declutters, which really shows me that I enjoy it. The shade that I have is in Natural, um, and it just looks like this, you know, a, a stick foundation, but I like it especially in the summertime because it's more of a lighter coverage. I mean, you can really, you know, try to apply a lot more product to build it up, but to me, it's more of a light to, you know, good medium coverage foundation, and especially for the summer when I go a little bit lighter, especially with face makeup, I like to reach for something that's not super full coverage, and maybe not even like a full, like a solid medium to full, but something a little bit lighter, and that to me is the Anastasia. So I like the coverage on it for certain situations. It can be a little bit drier on my dry skin, and a lot of times I really like to pair this with some sort of um, like beauty oil, like the Forsali Rose Gold Elixir, things like that. I think that they pair really well together. Uh, but yeah, this is one that has continued to stay in my collection, even though it's not a foundation that I typically prefer to have in my collection. I still really do like it and I still do keep it around. I do like this a shade on me. And uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of bad things to say about the Anastasia Stick Foundation, so I thought I would mention it here in my top five. Okay, so another eyeshadow palette that I definitely wanted to suggest is the Soft Glam Palette 
when this palette came out, I was like, oh my gosh, this palette looks like it's one for me. This one definitely looks messier than my Mod Run, I will say that. I do still have the brush in here. I do like the Anastasia brushes for the most part. I definitely like the flat shader side more than I do the blending. Sometimes the blending side can be a little bit scratchier, but for the most part, I can still get on with them and I typically keep the brushes. So my Soft Glam palette is a bit messier than my Modern Renaissance, but I enjoy this palette so much and these are definitely... I mean, these are just so me colors. This is a very neutral palette as well. The shimmers in here are just so beautiful. We do have a lot of variances of brown, so this palette's definitely not going to be for everybody, but it is like a softer, more neutral palette than the Modern Renaissance, but I think that the formula is the same. And, you know, especially kind of these mauve tones in here, I just find this palette to be so beautiful. Um, it's one that I reach for a lot. After this one came out, I kind of start, I, I found myself reaching for it more than the modern renaissance and there was a couple times, I, I do travel quite a bit especially because my husband does work um, a, quite a few hours away from where we live so I do travel quite a bit and I found myself reaching for this one more and more and it coming in my travel bag more than the modern renaissance so sometimes that happens when newer products come out you know you kind of go for the new shiny things but still, I just with my makeup preferences sometimes, I feel like I reach for the soft glam or prefer the soft glam a little bit more. So this one is definitely also a beautiful palette and one that I recommend. Alrighty, so another uh, one that I wanted to talk about, this is actually a lip product, and this is the lip product that for sure I enjoyed the most from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and this is gonna sound super crazy because this is not what I prefer for my lipstick collection because it's actually a lip gloss. I actually really enjoyed the Anastasia lip glosses. This shade here is in Kristen, um, and her glosses are, I'll do a, a swatch of this one. I have found the glosses to be more pigmented for a gloss instead of just being, you know, kind of like sheer, and that's what I prefer with lip gloss. I don't prefer a lot of sheer glosses. I like something with a bit more of an oomph, and that there is the swatch of Kristen, and I think that it's really beautiful. You can wear it by itself, and I have worn this by myself in videos. You can top it over a lipstick, and I think that it looks really pretty. It's not too goopy. It's not too sticky at all. Um, it's just a really nice smooth lip gloss and again I like that it is more pigmented. So out of all of the lip products that I've tried from Anastasia, this is actually the one that I like the most. So I definitely wanted to include that in my top five section. And then I have one more product to talk about and this is another eyeshadow palette. So this one here is the Narvina. I really enjoyed the Narvina so much and this one, I, okay so I've got this one most recently but again I still feel like for me for me. It looks a little bit on the messy side, but this palette is so beautiful as well. When it came out with the different purples and the pinks, I love purple and pink makeup. I wear it a lot and I just think it's so beautiful. So when this came out, I was like, this is definitely one that I could see, you know, just really enjoying in my collection. Again, I feel like it has the same formula as the Modern Renaissance and also the Soft Glam. I have not mentioned the subculture in here. I did try it. I liked it. I ended up decluttering it out of my collection because I wasn't reaching for it a ton. And it is. I that formula is different than the three palettes that I'm mentioning here, and I just prefer this formula more. Yes, it's still very powdery. Yes, you still get a lot of kick up and you need a lighter hand, I believe, when working with the Anastasia palettes, but I really do like the formula across the three eyeshadows that I'm mentioning here, both the mattes and the shimmers, and I feel like all the looks I've done with the Ravina have just been so beautiful. I did also just get the Sultry palette, but I've only tried it on my eyes two times as of right now, so it wouldn't be fair for me to include it in either of the categories because I definitely need to try it out more um, in order to give my full review, but the Norvina is just so beautiful as well. So these three palettes from Anastasia, I mean, these are really like the standouts for the brand for me, so I wanted to mention all three of them because I just love them so much, um, and I can see these being in my collection for a very long time. Alrighty, then after that, that is gonna do it for my top five, bottom five on Anastasia Beverly Hills. I would love to know what you thought in the comments down below. Let me know some of your favorites, maybe some of your fails from the brand. Also, let me know if you'd want to see the best brand buys with the two brands next month, like I had been doing, or if you want to see a top five, bottom five, and you can leave some brand suggestions. As long as it's something that I've tried enough items from the brand that I can really break it into those two categories. I will gladly do that or maybe I can just mix this style of video in every couple months here or so. But let me know your thoughts. I would love to know. And as always, if you guys did enjoy this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. I hope that you'll also consider subscribing before you go and I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.